Penguin Chick by Betty Tatham, illustrated by Helen Davy. Genre. Expository text gives information about things in the real world, such as emperor penguins. What facts do you want to learn about these penguins and their chicks? A fierce wind howls. It whips snow across the ice. Here, a female emperor penguin has just laid an egg. It is the only egg she will lay this year. Most birds build nests for their eggs, but on the ice in Antarctica, there are no twigs or leaves. There is no grass or mud, nothing to build a nest with, nothing but snow and ice. The new penguin father uses his beak to scoop the egg onto his webbed feet. He tucks it under his feather-covered skin into a special place called the brood patch. The egg will be snug and warm there as if it were in a sleeping bag. One of the penguin parents must stay with the egg to keep it warm. But where penguins lay their eggs, there is no food for them to eat. The penguin father is bigger and fatter than the mother. He can live longer without food, so the father penguin stays with the egg while the mother travels to the sea to find food. The two parents sing together before the mother penguin leaves. Along with many other penguins, the mother penguin leaves the rookery where she laid her egg. The mother walks or slides on her belly. This is called tobogganing. She uses her flippers and webbed feet to push herself forward over ice and snow. Because it's winter in Antarctica, Water near the shore is frozen for many miles. After three days, the mother penguin comes to the end of the ice. She dives into the water to hunt for fish, squid, and tiny shrimp-like creatures called krill. Back at the rookery, the penguin fathers form a group called a huddle. They stand close together for warmth. Each keeps his own egg warm. For two months, the penguin father always keeps his egg on his feet. When he walks, he shuffles his feet so the egg doesn't roll away. He sleeps standing up. He has no food to eat, but the fat on his body keeps him alive. Finally, he feels the chick move inside the egg. The chick pecks and pecks and pecks. In about three days, the egg cracks open. The chick is wet, but soon his soft feathers, called down, dry and become fluffy and gray. The father still keeps the chick warm in the brood patch. Sometimes the chick pokes his head out. But while he's so little, he must stay covered. And he must stay on his father's feet. Otherwise, the cold would kill him. The father talks to the chick in his trumpet voice. The chick answers with a whistle. The father's trumpet call echoes across the ice. The penguin mother is on her way back to the rookery, but she can't hear him. She's still too far away. If the mother doesn't come back soon with food, the chick will die. Two days pass before the mother can hear the father penguin's call. At last, the mother arrives at the rookery. She cuddles close to the chick and trumpets to him. He whistles back. With her beak, she brushes his soft gray down. The mother swallowed many fish before she left the ocean. She brings some of this food back up from her stomach and feeds her chick. 
she has enough food to keep him fed for weeks. He stays on her feet and snuggles into her brood patch. The father is very hungry, so he travels to open water. There, he dives to hunt for food. Weeks later, the father returns with more food for the chick. Each day, the parents preen, or brush, the chick's downy coat with their beaks. This keeps the down fluffy and keeps the chick warm. As the chick gets bigger, he and the other chicks no longer need to stay on their parents' feet. Instead, they stay together to keep warm. This group of chicks is called a crochet, or a nursery. The chick now spends most of his time here, but he still rushes to his mother or father to be fed when either one comes back from the ocean. Sometimes the chick and the other young penguins dig their beaks into the ice to help them walk up a slippery hill. They toboggan down fast on their fluffy bellies. The chick grows and grows. After five months, he has grown into a junior penguin. He is old enough to travel to the ocean. Winter, August. September, spring, October, November, December, summer, January. Now he has a waterproof coat of feathers instead of fluffy down. He can swim in the icy cold ocean because his feathers keep him dry and warm. The young penguin spends most of his time in the water. He swims, flapping his flippers as if he were flying underwater. He uses his webbed feet to steer wherever he wants to go. He catches a fish with his beak and swallows it head first. Now the young penguin can catch his own food and take care of himself. In about five years, he'll find a mate. Then he'll take care of his own egg until the chick can hatch. If you're still listening to this video, what I'd like for you to do, if you're interested in a tiny bit of extra credit, is take a look at pages 218 and 219. Specifically, I would like for you to look at this timeline down at the bottom of the two pages. If you look very closely, there's something odd about this timeline. If you can figure it out, let Miss Goddard know at the end of class or tomorrow, and she will give you an extra credit bonus point on your next assignment. Thanks for watching!